Attention, attention, stop what you're doing. Because we're coming back to the Hal Sparks Radio Program, Mega Worldwide. Oh my God! They went a little crazy with it, and I appreciate it. Now let's get back with Hal Sparks Radio Program, Mega Worldwide. Um, we do have some uh, callers, and we'll get to them in just a second, but uh, there was semi-breaking news um, from yesterday that... Uh, U.S. President Joe Biden said Friday he would make it, quote, very, very difficult for Russia to launch any invasion of Ukraine, which warned that a large scale attack may be planned for next month. That's Ukraine warning that Russia might attack, not Russia warning they're going to attack next month because they wouldn't. (laughs) Can't do a large scale surprise attack if you announce it, I suppose. Washington and Kiev said Moscow has mass troops near Ukraine's borders and accused Russia of planning an invasion. Biden and President Vladimir Putin are due to hold a video call shortly to discuss the rising tensions. Both sides confirmed Friday. Biden told reporters in Washington he was putting together, quote, the most comprehensive and meaningful set of initiatives to make it very, very difficult for Mr. Putin to go ahead and do what people are worried he may do. Moscow seized Crimea from Ukraine in 2014 and has since backed separatists fighting uh, Kiev in the east of the country. The conflict has left more than 13,000 dead. By the way, um, I don't know how many people know this, but... um, you know how many people are aware that, like, of Israeli sh- soldiers shooting Palestinians, um, you know, basically sniping them in, at different times over the last f- five decades, and they've become, uh, you know, stories, you know, they they kind of flare up as an international story. The response drives down I- Israel's behavior around these kind of things. They, they get kind of defensive about it. There's a back and forth, and then it kind of f- goes under the radar you know, um, again, um, the Russians do this to Ukrainians all the time. Russian snipers shoot Ukrainians across the border all the time. This is, and it's been going on for years. And I, um, I'll, you know, on my regular live stream this week, I will, I'll be bringing up a couple of those incidents where they, you know, they talk about it because there's not a lot of it in, talked about in the English speaking press at all. Like we just don't hear about that kind of stuff because if we did all bets are off as far as how we deal with Russia. And, and that's part of the things like we, you know, the, we, there's this constant ratcheting down that happens. To this. Let's, um, the, the most likely time to reach readiness for escalation will be the end of January. Ukrainian Defense Minister uh, uh, Oleksiy, Oleksiy, he spells it very strangely, uh, Reznikov, said, uh, told Parliament in Kiev on Friday, a report in Washington Post on Friday citing U.S. officials in an intelligence document said Russia was planning a multi-front offensive involving up to 175,000 troops as soon as next year. Now, this may be... Uh, a situation where Russia and China are trying to coordinate. You go for Ukraine the same time I go for Taiwan. That's the that's the part that the Pentagon is gaming for right now. And so we are going to start sending people to both of those places to as as effectively human shielding. In that, if you do this, you're not just killing Ukrainians. You're not just attacking Ukrainians, but human beings from the United States and our allies are going to be on the ground there. That's already true in Taiwan. It's largely true as far as contractors in Ukraine, and it will increase more than likely. And that's part of, I have no doubt, what Biden's talking about, which is NATO troops on the ground near the border to assist in, you know, uh, the Ukrainian troops. Um, Let's grab a call, though, um, before we get too far into this. Who do we have on the line, Chicago? First up is Daniel from Charlotte, North Carolina. Cool. Hey, Daniel, welcome. Hey, hey, how how are you go. doing? I'm good. Go ahead. Uh, the, re- uh, the reason I was calling is I wanted to talk about the uh, shooting in Michigan, and mm-hmm. one of the things that I I have a feeling about is is that part of this is you know our religious teachings and stuff like that as far as how separated we are as. I'm a Christian, and and there's a lot of Christianity and a lot of this stuff, or supposed Christianity, I should say. And I feel that we as a society have separated so much in our houses of worship that I honestly Mm -hmm. feel that it would be more 
beneficial if we visited and spent time in each other's houses of worship, that that would break down quite a bit of these walls. I, I, you know, I, I would hope so. I don't know necessarily that in this particular situation, you have a breakdown of modern Christianity or, or an attack on the other. This was not this, you know, this I think has more to do with the mental illness of a child and the inability of the parents to deal with it properly and their own immaturity at creating a you know perfect storm like i said much more akin to the sandy hook mother's a strange relationship with the father and the and the prepper uh focus that she had what what i think would help right. is that if you're a if you view yourself as a a decent christian especially considering there's a holiday coming up that kind of perfectly uh, you know makes an example of the better behaviors one would hope is in it, you know, is in addressing these people who cr- use the ter- you know, faux Christianity as a shield for all kinds of bad behavior and calling it out in a way that it is not, you know, in I, you know, in line with your kind of question about faith that calls it out in a way that is not an attack on faith in general, but an a, a, but an assertion of the true meaning. Right. You know what I mean? And, and if, I that, if that. Mm-hmm. Whereas it's like after 9-11 or any terrorist attack, so many of the faux Christians are like, well, why aren't more Muslims calling this out? We should be – if they want that kind of thing, we should be setting that example when these faux right. Christians do the January Yes, 6th. absolutely. I, I mean I think, that's, I think that's always a good idea, um, it, you know, and, is, and because of the fear of racists, because of the, you know, the belief that – and this is one of the the issues I have with sort of what would be the anti-racist movement is the, the belief that racism is so prevalent and so just surrounds and permeates everything that that must be the primary thing you defend against. And therefore, um, they're afraid that if they come out and, and decry it, um, then that will give the racists an in. And there's so many of them, it would just be a stampede and that kind of stuff. So many... Many religious people believe that as well as, you know, as, as, you know, sort of the activist class of that, that protects marginalized groups. They believe that if you admit to the reality of the humanity, even of, of bad deeds related only, like I said, no correlation uh, or causation even involved the, the pattern as opposed to a category. Um, right. That, that they're afraid that the pattern thinking will cause people to automatically go, well, they're even admitting that they blah, blah, blah. And they can't afford to let anybody in. And everybody it doesn't believe it's a, you know, it's a it, it's a lack of sense of strength in your own philosophical and spiritual beliefs and not and not believing that you can't ultimately weather the the storm of it. So a lot of people get very afraid of that. And I think you're right though. I think that's the way you always stand up to it. Um, so that would be, you know, my way of thinking. And again, the only real way to solve that is to be a great example of whatever your belief system is, whatever your philosophy or spirituality is. Period. You know what I mean? And that's that's you know, no, um, that's crucial, right? So, uh, yeah, right. if that makes sense. Yeah, appreciate it. No problem. Um, yeah. Um, and uh, we don't. I don't know that we have time to take another call before the break. Uh, in this. Um. But I mean, it, as the as the holidays approach, m- my message, it, you know, has been and sort of will always be for everybody, whether you participate in the holidays or not, being neighborly in your approach to your fellow human beings as much as possible goes way farther than the assertion of the battle lines youth are used to talking about, especially on social media. They have your battle lines, your gang colors, whatever they may be, have far less value in your interpersonal uh, relationships with strangers and people out and about have far less value um, than just being neighborly as far as selling your belief system and they're more indicative you know what i mean 
because if you're if you're wearing a you know one of the if you're wearing a MAGA hat or a a, a pink cat hat from the Women's March or you're wearing a coexist shirt with all the symbols on it or you're wearing a Gadsden flag t-shirt your behavior as a human being and how you treat waiters and strangers and hold or don't hold doors goes way farther to show people what kind of a human being you are than any decal you could wear or you know or you know expressive element or out you dye the ends of your hair like Billy Ellish I, I, people take more from that than they'll ever do from, you know, the the cross that Mike Pillow wears around his neck as a way to display what he's selling as his spiritual belief versus how he actually behaves as a human being when he attract, uh, attacks a fan who wanted a picture with him who was holding a tangerine of assault. You know what I mean? We'll be back right after this. It's the Health Sports Radio Program, Mega Worldwide, on WCPT Radio, Chicago's Progressive Talk.